Hello everyone. This video is going to be focusing in on solving trigonometric equations. So it's not really going to be any theory, more just techniques on how to solve different types of questions. We'll start by looking at the general approach we need to use to answer these questions. And then we'll look at three types of trigonometric equations you could be asked, which you can now solve with what you know. Then, as always, we'll wrap up with a summary. So let's get started with our general approach to solving trigonometric equations. Now you've solved plenty of equations before, no worries. These are basically the same. But instead of an x, we might have a cos x, or a sin x, or a tan x. Or maybe you'll have a combination. But that doesn't make it any different for you, just solve it as normal. And then, once we get to sin x equals some number, we know how to solve that, with reference angles and the like. So basically, it's the same process, but instead of our variable, we have a sine, cos, or a tan. Often though, we'll be asked to give our answers only in a particular domain. A domain is like a range of values that we care about. Because trig graphs go on forever, we might get an infinite number of answers. But obviously, we don't care about every single answer, we only care about the ones in a specific range that we're worried about. So say we solve an equation, and these are all our answers but the domain was for theta between 0 and 360, we would only take these answers, the ones that fall in that range. So keep that in mind as we jump into our first question. Solve 2 sine theta is equal to 1 for theta in the domain theta between 0 and 360. Alright, so we're starting nice and simple. In this case, we want to solve for sine theta, and once we have that, we can solve the rest. So what do we do? We just treat it like a normal equation. We can divide both sides by 2 to give sine theta equal to a half. And now, we have something that we've solved before. Hopefully you remember how to do this, but if you don't, I got your back. Good guy Ian. Sine is positive, so our angle is in the first or the second quadrant. Remember, a Tommy Sweet tutorial courses because it's true. Then, our reference angle gives sine r is equal to a half. So r is equal to the inverse sine of a half, which equals 30 degrees. So that means, theta is equal to r or 180 minus r. So theta equals 30 or 150. So those are our answers, right? Almost. We just need to check that these answers are in our domain. Yep, that's in the domain, so that means we're done. Really good job. Remember what I was saying about the domain before. If our domain was for values of theta between 0 and 90, we would only give the answer theta equals 30, because 150 lies outside of this range. If our domain was theta between 0 and 720, we would have to consider a second rotation around the unit circle. So our answers would be 30 and 150, as well as 390 and 510, because sine 390 and sine 510 also equal a half. I generally do these questions without a domain in mind and fix it at the end, but you might want to be a bit more prepared. In any case, that's one type of trig equation you might be asked, so excellent job. Now let's move on to the second type of question you might get asked. This one's a bit trickier. Solve 1 plus root 2 cos 2 theta is equal to 2, for theta in the domain 0 less than theta less than 360. Alright, straight off the bat, this one's a bit more complicated, because instead of having a theta, we've got a 2 theta. But fear not, it's a simple fix. What we're going to do is simplify the problem to something that we already know, and we do this by making a little substitution. So we say, let u equal to 2 theta. And now this is all good, right? Because now, we just need to solve for cos u. Which makes you feel all warm and good inside, because this is what we're used to. But there is a little subtlety that comes with this. Keep in mind, the domain of theta was between 0 and 360. So that means the domain of 2 theta is between 0 and 720. And since u is equal to 2 theta, that means the domain of u is between 0 and 720. So when we sub u into our question, we essentially get a new question, which is, solve 1 plus root 2 cos u equals 2 for u in the domain 0 less than u less than 720. So we can simplify this and we get cos u equal to 1 over root 2. Now we can solve this, I'm not going to go through it here because I've got places to be and you've got places to be and you know, but we'll find u equals 45 or 315 degrees. So we're done, right? Not exactly, because remember, our domain is for u between 0 and 720. So that means, considering the second rotation, u could also be 405 or 675 degrees, because these are just 360 plus our original answers. Okay, sure, that's fair enough. 
So u equals 45, 315, 405, or 675. So now we're done, right? Again, no. <laughs> because what are we trying to do in the question? Solve for theta. We don't want u. So because u equals 2 theta, that means our acceptable values for theta are u over 2. So those are 22.5, 157.5, 202.5, and 337.5. And now we're done. Awesome job. Sadly, with these questions, there's quite a lot of places you could make a silly mistake. But the key thing to remember here was to change the domain when you made your substitution. But make sure you go back to theta when you're done. In this case, we had a 2 theta, so we had to double the domain. A similar thing would be if we had theta on 2. Then we would need to halve the domain. As you get more practice, you'll get more used to this kind of thing, and you won't need to do the u equals thing. You'll just be able to do it straight away. So with that, let's tackle our last question. Here it is. Solve sine x equals root 3 cos x for x between 0 and 180. Alright. Now this one is the hardest of the three that we tackled, because here we have two different types of trig functions. It's a piece of cake when we only have sine and when we only have cos. But both, as my old maths teacher would say, it's a real bastard, isn't it? He was a strange one. So what do we do? Well, we introduce a very sneaky trick and that's to divide both sides by cos x. It seems kind of random, I know, but what do we get? Sine x over cos x becomes tan x, and cos x over cos x becomes 1. So that means we're left with tan x equaling root 3. And that's exactly what we want, because we can solve this. Taking reference angles and all that, which I'm not going to go through, we can find x equals 60 and 240 degrees. But remember, our domain is for x only between 0 and 180. So that means our final answer is just x equals 60. So yeah, pretty sneaky. If you have two different types of functions, try dividing by sine, cos, or tan. In this case it was cos, but if that didn't work, we would need to try something else. So with that, that's all we're going to cover in this video. There's not a lot to summarize, but let's remember our general technique. There's two stages to all of these questions. We firstly solve the equation like it's a normal one, but where our variable is the trig function. Then, once we have sine theta, cos theta, or tan theta equals some number, we can solve this using our reference angle technique. Remember, it's also important you pay attention to and answer within the right domain. And if you're answering something to do with a 2 theta or a theta over 2, make sure you adjust the domain accordingly. And finally, in questions with two different types of functions, see if dividing by sine, cos, or tan will help. And that's it for this video, guys. Catch you next time.